the sun cast gentle rays onto our suburban home. On the outside, anyone would say, Mark and I, Lila lived the dream. White picket fence, laughing children, and weekend barbecues. But like the overgrown ivy on our walls, some things hid beneath the surface, quietly suffocating the joy. The twins, Jake and Emma, hurried down to breakfast, their school bags swinging behind them. The excitement in their eyes was palpable. Mom, today's the last day to pay for the field trip to the museum, Emma chirped, waving a permission slip at me. Mark looked up from his newspaper. Again with this? Didn't you have a trip just a month ago? These schools, always looking for ways to get more money. I tried to keep my voice calm, not wanting to start an argument so early. It's just $5 each, Mark. It's a small fee, and the kids have been looking forward to it. Every dollar counts, Lila. If we keep spending on every little thing, we'll have nothing left. They can skip this one. My heart sank as I saw Emma's face fall. Jake tried to be the strong one, whispering words of comfort to his sister, but the disappointment was evident. That evening, as the children went to bed, Rosa, my dear friend and neighbor, came by for a cup of tea. She'd seen the twins' long faces and wanted to check in. What's with Jake and Emma today? They looked so down. Taking a deep breath, I recounted the morning's events. Rosa shook her head, her face a mix of sympathy and frustration. You need to do something, Lila. It's not just about this trip. It's his constant pinching pennies at the expense of your children's happiness. It's just hard, Rosa. I've tried talking to him, but he sees it as being responsible. But I've started noticing it's becoming a pattern. Last week, he wouldn't let Jake get new shoes, even though his old ones are falling apart. Rosa leaned in, her voice serious. You need to document this, Lila. Every instance, every refusal, every time he prioritizes saving over the needs of you or the children. There might come a time when you need that. The thought scared me, but deep down, I knew she was right. The night grew darker, and as Rosa left, her words echoing in my ears, I took out an old journal from my desk drawer. Sitting by the dim light of my bedside lamp, I started writing. The date, the event, the amount in question. A list began to form, and with each entry, the gravity of the situation became clearer. This wasn't just financial prudence. This was control. The soft glow of my bedside lamp illuminated page after page of the journal. As days turned into weeks, it had become more than just an emotional outlet. It was evidence. Entries about Mark's refusal to buy Emma the cold medicine she needed, or the time he bought himself a new watch while Jake continued wearing shoes two sizes too small. And then there were the instances when he'd seen me returning from grocery shopping. Why is this bill so high, Lila? What did you waste our money on this time? I didn't waste anything, Mark. Prices are going up, and we need these things for the house. Every penny saved is a penny earned. You need to be more responsible. And so it went. Until one evening, my patience snapped. Mark had just returned home, brandishing a new set of golf clubs. Look at these beauties, Lila. Got them on sale. I stared at him, incredulous. On sale? Mark, Emma needed new glasses last week, and you said we couldn't afford them. But now there's money for golf clubs? He frowned, clearly irritated. These clubs are an investment. I'll be using them for years. Besides, Emma's glasses can wait. They can't wait. She's struggling in school because she can't see the board. Mark's face turned a shade redder. I'm doing what's best for this family. Why can't you see that? I'm just being financially responsible. Responsible? Mark, you're strangling us with your responsibility. This isn't about saving. It's about control. He didn't have a response, just a cold, steely glare that sent chills down my spine. I needed support, and I knew where to turn. The next morning, as I recounted the previous night's events over coffee, Rosa's face grew graver with every word. This isn't just stinginess, Lila. It's financial abuse. I know a group of women who've gone through the same thing. They meet every week to share their experiences and support one another. You should come. A week later, I found myself in a cozy living room filled with women of all ages. As I listened to their stories, a sense of solidarity washed over me. Some tales were eerily similar to mine, while others were far more severe. But the underlying theme was the same. Control, dominance, and manipulation. One of the women, a kind-eyed lady named June, handed me a booklet after the meeting. It's about gaining financial freedom, Lila. 
strategies, tips, everything you need to know. It helped me, and I believe it can help you too. As I leafed through the pages later that night, hope began to flicker. This wasn't the end. It was just the beginning. The sound of the alarm clock pulled me from a deep slumber, but it wasn't the usual time to rise. The house was cloaked in darkness. Sneaking out of bed without waking Mark, I tiptoed to the living room, fired up my laptop, and joined my first online class for financial independence. The instructor's voice, calm yet assertive, spoke about budgeting, emergency funds, and the importance of having separate savings. Always ensure you have access to your own money, away from the prying eyes of a controlling partner. It was like a light bulb went on. By the end of the class, I felt invigorated. The knowledge was power, and I was finally getting some of my own. A visit to the bank later that week set the wheels in motion. I opened a secret account, providing only my personal email for communication. Anytime I went grocery shopping or ran errands, I began to withdraw small amounts of cash, stashing it away safely. Mom, my shoes have holes in them, Jake whispered one evening, showing me the worn-out soles. That's okay, sweetie. I've got it covered. And for the first time in what felt like ages, I did. Using some of my hidden savings, I took Jake shopping, watching his face light up as he tried on a brand new pair. But savings weren't enough. I needed a consistent flow of income, something Mark wouldn't know about. Scouring online job boards, I found a part-time remote job that fit perfectly with my schedule. Late-night work sessions became my norm, with every earned penny being deposited into my secret account. It wasn't long before I had to confide in Rosa. I needed someone to watch the kids for a few hours while I attended an important virtual meeting. Of course I'll help Lila, but a job? Isn't it risky? What if Mark finds out? Every step I take is a risk, Rosa, but it's a step towards our freedom. And I'll be careful, I promise. As weeks turned into months, the balance in my secret account grew. Every small victory, every paycheck, every wise financial decision added to my newfound confidence. One evening, as I worked on a report, a soft chime on my laptop signaled an incoming message. Glancing at the sender's name, my heart skipped a beat. It was June. Hey, Lila. Heard about your new job. Congratulations. Remember, financial freedom is just around the corner. And for the first time in years, I truly believed it was. Whispers of my newfound confidence must have reached Mark, because a cold tension began to grip our household. One evening, as I was preparing dinner, he cornered me against the kitchen counter, his voice dripping with suspicion. Where were you this afternoon, Lila? I was with Rosa and the kids at the park. You're lying. Rosa called looking for you. I met his gaze, refusing to let him see my fear. Maybe she got her dates mixed up. The tightness in his jaw betrayed his frustration. Watch yourself, Lila. You're treading on thin ice. The pressure was mounting, and I knew I needed more information. Digging deeper into our finances, I stumbled upon a series of accounts I hadn't known about. Large sums of money, investments, and even property titles under Mark's name alone. With a bit more sleuthing, I discovered he had done this before, keeping financial secrets from a previous partner. I can't believe he's been hiding all this from me, I whispered to Rosa over the phone one evening. It's like I never really knew him. You're seeing his true colors now, Lila. Just stay strong. My secret journal, filled with the dark truths of our life together, lay hidden beneath the loose floorboard under our bed. But one evening, as I entered our bedroom, I found Jake sitting on the floor, the journal in his hands and tears streaming down his face. Mom, why didn't you tell me? Oh God, he'd read it. My heart raced, but I knelt beside him, taking his hands in mine. I wanted to protect you, Jake. I didn't want you to worry. He clenched the journal, his voice shaking. We need to leave him, Mom. This, this isn't love. It's prison. Wrapping my arms around him, I felt a resolve strengthening within me. The time to act was nearing, and with Jake by my side, I felt an even fiercer determination to break free from Mark's shackles. Walking into the lawyer's office felt like stepping into a whole new world. The leather chairs, polished mahogany table, and the distant hum of the city outside filled me with a mix of anxiety and determination. But the woman who greeted me, with her kind eyes and firm handshake, eased my fears. Tell me everything, Lila. We're here to help. And so, I poured out the tale, 
Mark's stinginess, the hidden assets, the journal, everything. After a long pause, the lawyer leaned forward. You have rights, Lila, but we need to be smart. We need evidence of his deceit. But where do I even start? She handed me a list. Bank statements, property titles, anything that can prove he's been hiding assets from you. The next few weeks became a whirlwind of secret meetings and covert operations. With Rosa and a few trusted members of my support group, we managed to dig up bank statements, investments, and property titles, all proving Mark's financial manipulations. One evening, as I sorted through the papers, my daughter, Emma, walked in, her young face etched with confusion. Mom, why are there so many papers? Are we moving? I beckoned her over, taking a deep breath. Emma, there's something I need to talk to you and Jake about. Gathering both my children in the living room, I began the difficult task of explaining our situation. Your father, he hasn't been honest with us, and I've been trying to find a way out, a way for us to be safe and happy. Jake squeezed my hand. We know, Mom, and we're with you no matter what. Emma nodded, her eyes glistening with tears. I want to be where you are, with you. Their support was the final piece of the puzzle, the last bit of strength I needed to finalize my plan. With the evidence in hand and my children by my side, the plot of liberation was set in motion, and there was no turning back. The morning sun painted golden hues on the horizon, but inside our home, a storm was brewing. Mark, unsuspecting, sat on the couch, engrossed in his newspaper, when I, with a deep breath to steal my resolve, stepped into the room, the weight of my evidence heavy in my hands. But I wasn't alone. Behind me, the door opened, allowing Rosa, members of my support group, and even Mrs. Henderson from next door, who'd often cast sympathetic glances my way, to file in. A unified front, each one a pillar of strength. Mark's head shot up, his confident smirk fading into a look of sheer surprise. What's all this? This, I began, voice unwavering, is your reckoning, Mark. I spread out the bank statements, property deeds, and investment papers on the table. All your secrets laid bare. His face drained of color, but ever the manipulator, he attempted one last play. Lila, I did this for us, for our family, can't you see? Rosa stepped forward her voice dripping with disdain. Spare us the theatrics, Mark. We all see right through you. The room echoed with murmurs of agreement. He looked around, the weight of his deceit pressing down on him from all sides. I'm... I'm sorry, Lila. I met his gaze, feeling the culmination of my journey, my struggles, my newfound strength. Your apologies mean nothing to me now. The next few days were a blur of legalities, but with the evidence and my unwavering determination... The divorce proceedings were swift. I secured a fair share of our assets, ensuring a comfortable life for my children and myself. Our new home, filled with laughter and love, was a far cry from the prison Mark had made our old one. And as the days turned into weeks, I found a new purpose. I started counseling sessions for women trapped in similar situations, using my experience, my journey, to light their path. One evening, as I sat on our porch, Rosa beside me, she raised her glass in a toast. To new beginnings, I smiled, the horizon looking brighter than ever. And to breaking chains. The story has come to an end. Was Lila right in refusing Mark's apologies, given the history of financial manipulation? Would you have done the same in her shoes or chosen a different path? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this animated story, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to OSA Our Stories Animated for more captivating tales.